All right. Uh, should we start then, I guess? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, today we're doing a long distance, international even, call. <laughs> and I'm, I'm here talking to Craig. Hi, Craig. Hi. Who are you? I'm the creator of Ziki. Yes. Um, I'm, I could go, you, I could go into a little, uh, description about Ziki if you want. I could do like a medium one, a long one, uh, it's up yeah. to you. Yeah. I think it's a good place to start to explain what, what Ziki okay. is. I, I, I could say that I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a fan. I, I ran into it when. Awesome. In 2014, when you had the Kickstarter yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I know a bit about it, but I, I, I bet most listeners don't. So, so what is Ziki? Cool. Yeah. And that was the first Kickstarter in 2014. I'm doing another one, uh, for kind of like the next steps, which I'm really excited about, but yeah, first off, uh, Ziki essentially improves the command line in all kinds of ways. Yeah. It makes the command line better, more friendly, more usable. Uh, it makes commands themselves a lot, um, friendlier. You can do things like visually navigate your Git history or uh, your database tables right from the command line. Uh, it also makes sessions a lot cleaner, which is really nice. Yeah. yeah the command line is, is it's awesome when you know exactly what to type. Mm -hmm. But when you don't know what to type, uh, the command line can have a pretty tedious learning curve. <laughs> yeah. So we're, you know, so we're constantly uh, Googling for kind of the same commands over and over. Yeah. Uh, Ziki is it's super lightweight. It uh, it makes your command line work kind of like a search engine where you can type anything right at the command prompt instead of just shell commands. Yep. So you can type uh, git log and then it becomes an interface for exploring your git log. Uh, you can type MySQL and it becomes an interface for exploring your, your database tables. So you don't need to uh, remember commands uh, and you can still be super productive right away. Yeah, and I, I, I'm going to link all the, all the videos you've made about this because I, I highly recommend people go watch them and uh, I, I was I was so glad when I started watching and and uh, you know exploring git was one of the examples and it's like yes yes I look for this all the time <laughs> people people made me put that at the at the front of the, the Kickstarter video I did I did like uh, literally um, like six or seven versions of the kicks of the new Kickstarter video and yeah. friends uh, and acquaintances told me like, look, I don't get it. It just doesn't make sense. I wouldn't really use this. And, uh, so then I like redid it and eventually they were like, okay, well, you've got this cool stuff with Git at the end. Why don't you put that at the beginning? Mm -hmm. And I was so kind of like thick skull. I still didn't listen until like three more revisions. So I was like, all right, I'll finally put it at the beginning. And then people are like, all right, now I get it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stuff like that is super difficult. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It, it feels to me like it really paid off to, to move it around. Oh, and there's there, there's so much in the videos as well. I mean, I, I watched your uh, older screencast as well. Um, mm. I don't know. I, I guess some parts are probably outdated, but they still illustrate the flow of, of Ziki really well, don't they? Yeah, fundamentally, um, the flow is, you know, it's still this kind of really simple kind of user interface where it's, it's, everything's just text and you kind of... Uh, drill into things and it kind of makes a little tree. So it's very simple and kind of, uh, kind of stays true to what, what's cool about the command line. Everything is just text and you have total control. It doesn't try to do anything fancy where it takes over your whole screen and, you know, makes some no. little DOS looking UI. <laughs> no. And it supports, uh, like clicking and stuff as well, which is kind of unexpected. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. when I see a terminal window, I never really expect the mouse to work there. Yeah. That's, that's kind of one of those things that I, I only big, begrudgingly mention because sometimes people think like, all right, this isn't a serious tool. Uh, mm -hmm. if you can use the mouse, uh, it's, it's more of like, I don't really use the mouse that much. It's just interesting. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're a new user or just to explain to people how it works, like if people understand that you can literally just click around with the mouse, yeah. uh, to navigate like your Git history or kill processes, then they can kind of visualize, okay, well, it's probably pretty easy with the keyboard as well. So it's worth mentioning. Yeah, 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 and 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 like you said, it's definitely not a, a a super simple tool to try and like hide the power and complexity. It's really a super super exciting tool. Really, the the thing I come back to thinking of because I I, I drop into Siki and I've tried tried it a couple of times and I tried some mm -hmm. more now preparing for this and watching the new videos and 
I, I feel kind of lost, but in a really exciting way. Like I'm in, <laughs> I'm in this new area and there are so many things possible here. I just need to find them and like find mm -hmm. the things I want to do. And mm -hmm. the thing it makes it makes me think of is when I had got, used a Mac for a couple of years and discovered Quicksilver, mm. the, the, the launcher kind of thing. It had the, yeah, the same yeah, feeling yeah. like, yeah, there, there are pains and there are things and I write and things happen and this is so exciting. <laughs> it's a whole new world. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, the the new Kickstarter and the new features are uh, kind of there to address that. I've had other people have similar reactions, you know, over the years, mm -hmm. um, where you kind of you feel you feel a little bit lost. It's just like if you run into the, into the command line the first time, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you've never used it before, you're like, okay, what do I do here? Um, my kind of solution I've stumbled on uh, after like many years of trying different things and brainstorming about different ways of doing this is just make the command line work like a search engine. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're a new user to Ziki, you can just try to type anything that seems natural and comes to your mind. Just type it in the, uh, right at your command prompt and then type a keyboard shortcut to kind of search, uh, the same way you would do in a Google, you know, uh, yeah. uh Google search. Um, the uh, Kickstarter is all about making this kind of central repository called Ziki Hub, yeah. where people can uh, contribute example commands, uh, even like, you know, powerful interfaces that they, they've made, uh, even just sort of content uh, that, that helps you out. Uh, so you'll be able to um, do searches right at your command prompt, and you'll see all these search results that come from, you know, everyone else in the community. Uh -huh. And then you can uh, just expand those and just start using commands right there in the search results. Yeah, because part of Sikurite is that it's really easy for me to extend my own setup. If I yes. get it correct. Yeah, so this is really taking it one more step. So I can find what other people have been doing. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's kind of a missing missing piece in the the command line landscape. You know, I, there's no way I could do that myself. Like, yeah. try to help help people have a good initial user experience by letting them kind of type whatever made you know whatever seemed intuitive to them, and then making all the search results myself. But you know, <laughs> generating. Uh, yeah, that's kind of I kind of learned that the hard way. I, mm -hmm. I like contributed a ton of commands oh, myself okay. over the years, uh, but it was just you know an uphill battle, and new commands come out. Um, mm -hmm. But you know. Uh, a group, a relatively small group of people collaborating together can easily tackle that. Um, yeah. You know, no, no one could, no one could reproduce Google without kind of getting the, the help of the whole world. <laughs> because true. when you Google, you Google for everything, you know, everything yeah. that's out there in the world. Um, with the command line, really, there are only like, you know, any given person probably uses uh, 20, 40, 100, you know, commands uh, kind of throughout most of their, their day. And it doesn't take that many people, you know, like, uh, you know, if, if I can get people kind of, you know, small core group, uh, even, uh, just contributing, you know, you can pretty quickly build up a little knowledge base of kind of the main, main 10 or 20 commands that you, uh, the ways that you run the top hundred or 200 commands. And then all of yeah. a sudden it's going to be really useful. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly you've covered lots of area and then. If it's really easy to add more stuff, people might be able to fill in, start filling in the, the little blanks they find themselves as well, I suppose. Right, right. Yeah, that's the idea. And the last Kickstarter, I had uh, 20, 2,700 people, I think, back it. So with this, yeah. with this new one, I, I hope it's a lot bigger because you know, what I'm offering is kind of a, you know, just fundamentally a lot more interesting. So if I can get a few thousand people backing it, like, you know, this thing's going to hopefully get up and running and be really valuable pretty quickly. Yeah, so, so when, when this is released... Uh, the Kickstarter will have gone live yesterday, uh, Swedish time. Uh, I'm not going to try to convert time zones. <laughs> but, <laughs> but probably the same day, uh, San Francisco time, mm -hmm. actually. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so this will be really, really early in the Kickstarter. But so, so that one is, this one is focused on Siki Hub and the mm -hmm. sharing stuff. Uh, will it, uh, also, like, will it need, will Siki itself as it is now need to change a lot for this, or is it is it a big add on on top? Yeah, but most of that's already done mm -hmm. uh, for for the last many months. Um, I've been I've been refactoring things. Uh, the biggest thing I did was essentially make uh, a single text file format 
that kind of has your 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 past sessions and uh, notes that you make as well. Mm-hmm. And then made that sort of really general and flexible such that that's, there's one text file format that you can uh, share to Zicky Hub. And that's how you contribute. And then people, other people can search kind of in those notes that you, that you made. Uh, okay. So that's really, so it contains everything there in one yeah. file format. That's very, uh. it's very kind of flexible and general purpose. The, the main sort of uh, rule for the file is you can have headings, kind of like wiki pages, kind of like markdown files. Mm-hmm. You can have headings if you want. If when you just, when you go into Zicky shell, which you can do, you can jump in and out of Zicky shell right from your normal uh, command shell. Like if you're a bash or Z shell user, yeah, you can you can just type commands and then type a keyboard shortcut to just jump in and use Zicky shell, and then type control um, control Q, and then you're right back in bash. So it's really easy. By the way, I, Zicky is it's confusing how you spell it. It's X I K I. Yep. Uh, if you if you uh, the best way of, of seeing kind of what I'm talking about because it's sometimes confusing to hear it described is to mm-hmm. if you look at the Kickstarter video uh, you can go to xiki.org yep the videos do a really good job of kind of showing you visually what what Zicky looks like it's, yeah. once you see it it's really simple it's kind of like a little tree interface that you can you know you can type like I said any word any kind of search right in your command prompt and then you can just start you know, running commands. Like if you don't know Docker, you just type Docker in a keyboard shortcut and then you just start using Docker because it kind of has a little interface with of the main options. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I keep thinking about the videos. I, I like them so much. They, 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 they cover so much information as well. They're really super dense in information. Oh, and thanks. I, yeah. <laughs> and I also really like the keyboard sound. I'm not sure why, but I really like the keyboard sound. <laughs> People like that. Just the sound effect of the keys being yeah, typed, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so cozy. <laughs> I've yeah. It was really hard to line it up with the, the hands of the little oh, animated oh, character. I that took didn't a long time. About that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, so you made the videos all by yourself. Not all by myself. I um, I found a really talented um, uh, local animator here in Oakland. Oh. Um, I'm out of San Francisco, and uh, just kind of sat with him and brainstormed, and he kind of drew stuff out as I was describing it. Um, and uh, eventually, that, that character, uh, the the girl typing in the command line at the beginning, is supposed to be my my wife, oh. like a cartoon version of my wife. Nice. Um, so we just did all this, this crazy stuff. And then we went went uh, and actually did some recording just so that people could see me in the video to add some kind of personality. Yeah. Uh, and if you remember the me dancing, we're doing a river dance. <laughs> yep, yep. With the, the horse <laughs> and important the banana. It's, yeah, that, that was actually an outtake. I was, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, we were having a lot of fun doing the, the, the video footage mm-hmm. and um, I was kind of, saying my my lines that i prepared and he told me like hey you're being all stiff like your hands are are right at your side and i started doing a river dance because you know like (laughs) river dances are basically your hands are to your side oh yeah yeah (laughs) and then we ended up using that (laughs) it's perfect but yeah the 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 clicking sound everyone likes that i've I've literally the typing sound i've literally showed the video to people and had them kind of say like yeah i don't know and I'm like, wait until I, I do another version with uh, the typing sounds and my uh, like voiceover lady, yeah. uh, another local person who's super talented. Uh, and I've showed them this, the same content with, you know, fun clicky sounds and a better voice instead of my kind of, you know, slurring, uh, kind of hard to understand uh, at times voice. And they're like, well, I like that now. And I'm like, well, it's the same content. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. I wondered this. <laughs> yeah, but it makes, it makes such a big difference. And I, it does. It yeah. Does. And I guess it's not something everyone thinks to put all this energy and thinking into. Um, yeah. I didn't want it. I didn't want to put all this time and energy into it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but I had to, like, like I said, the, first few versions I showed it to people, they were like, um, I don't get this. Like, like, you know, then I do another version and this, they'd say like, you know, pick the one thing that, uh, is the most important and like really hammer that first. And I was like, well, I thought I was, it's this. And they were like, no, but you were saying this, these other things that sidetracked us. So I do another more concise version. And then, then the feedback I got was, okay. Uh, 
now I get the one thing, but I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care that <laughs> you can. It's still progress, though. <laughs> no, it is. It is. Uh, uh, but yeah, they, they, they didn't. People just didn't find it that interesting that you could search in your command prompt uh, instead of Google searches, you know, by itself. Because um, they said, like, okay, well, that's neat, but how much time are you really saving me? Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I spend, you know, half an hour a week actually, you know, Googling. Um, and, you know, like, like I said, it ended up uh, after a few more revisions, I had to tell them that and show them right at the beginning, like, hey, this is what it looks like. It's not just searching. It's when you search, mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the, it, the search results are a usable interface. So you can literally start using Git, start using Docker, start using, uh, you know, React, yeah. Uh, just by typing those things, and then you just you just explore in and start using it. Yeah. Then people kind of were like, "All right, this this I really get." I had one uh, one kind of longtime advisor uh, who told me that it was the best best video he'd ever seen. Uh, wow. Best Kickstarter best Kickstarter video he'd seen. Yeah. And I was like, "And if you would have heard, you know, the reaction I was getting initially, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty pretty amazing to you know to get to that." Yeah. So so, so how long was point. the process roughly for? For the video, oh yeah. god, longer than I care to admit. It's oh, it's sorry. a gray area. No, 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 sorry. It's a gray area because I was doing other stuff at the very beginning, but um, many months, like not not a year, but between six months and a year. Mm -hmm. um, but I was doing I was doing other stuff toward the beginning of yeah. it as well. So, but it's, it's hard to say exactly. Yeah, and and you're working pretty much full time on Siki. Yeah, yeah, I've been working full time uh, since man. Uh, definitely before the 2014 Kickstarter. Uh, wow! Since mo mostly full time since actually about 2011. Wow! Wow! And was it was it like an active decision at that point? Now, now I'm going full time on this and just going for it. Yeah, um, yeah. I have. I, I still do have a, a website that I that I do um, that was you know getting pretty good traction as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's got 300,000 unique hits uh, or visits a month. Wow. Um, but uh, Zicky just was also kind of getting traction. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Zicky is like kind of an idea who's like time has come. Like mm -hmm. counterintuitively, uh, people are just getting more and more excited about, um, you know, command line interfaces, text interfaces like, like bots. Uh, more yeah, and more people yeah. are becoming developers. Um, there are things that I want to do with Zicky that um, other people are kind of starting to get and understand, understand now. Uh, I mean, this kind of text interface thing, it's not its not counterintuitive to me. I kind of thought that it would happen. Maybe not quite in as big of a way it is, as it is happening. I did a, uh, a couple of talks in uh, like uh, conference talks for uh, Strange Loop and RubyConf and QCon around the... Uh, 2012 13 time timeline and one of my talks was uh uh text and uh gui interfaces are merging the title of my talk oh, was yeah, something yeah. like that and i kind of talked about like you know hey voice recognition uh bot like interfaces like those are gonna you know it, it already kind of was happening in a way because like twitter was was a super hot back then and uh you know people were like sort of becoming mini programmers by mm -hmm. typing little messages with like at blah in it and hashtag blah. That's like, yeah. you know, that's people starting to uh, just type freeform things. Um, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, little little syntaxes to, in doing some kind of great things with it. And, you know, the modern in modern times, it's, uh, you know, the last few years, it's kind of stating the obvious to say like, hey, users are, tech savvy people, you can trust them with typing a hashtag and an at sign mm -hmm. or, you know, going into the command prompt and typing a search and then being able to uh, type a couple of keyboard shortcuts like the arrow keys or the mouse and click around and, and do things that that's changed. Like the landscape has changed going back. Uh, I've been a coder for 20 plus years, um, going back, you know, five, 10 years. Uh, the mantra was like, Hey, if you give users too much like rope, they're going to hang themselves. Like, you know, <laughs> The users of my application, any way that they can mess things up, they'll they'll mess it up, <laughs> and uh, they'll call tech support, and it'll be this you know debacle where we have to recode it and make sure everything is our whole user interface is locked down. So, oh yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But now, 
now that's different. Now, now users are doing all kinds of things. They're going out, they have tons of, tons of different apps that they use and evaluate on their own. They're, they're typing in little symbols. Uh, they get into trouble all the time and they get themselves out of trouble. You know, mm-hmm. they, they Google for things and, uh, yeah, and so, yeah, right. that, that's strange stuff in, in Slack to various bots to perform arcane stuff that we could have gone into a web interface and clicked a button. But no, no, we yeah. have text. <laughs> it really is a big difference. Exactly. I, I never thought about it like that until you said it. It's, it's, it's like Siri. Yeah, Siri was yeah. starting to become a big thing back then. And now it's such huge uh, Amazon Alexa. You know, you just talk to it. It's, you know, and, and all these people have kind of pointed out like, hey, that's just like the command line. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. A little friendlier. And, I'm, I, you know, I'm like... Uh, rolling my eyes because I'm like, ah, I've been saying that for years and years and no one really. <laughs> Why won't that you much. listen? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so. If everyone would just listen to me, the world would be perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> Not really. So, so I, I, I want to jump back a, a bit in, again in time. Like, where, where did, mm. what, what, where did Siki start, sort of, or what was the, like the first idea or the first thing? Has it changed a lot over sure. time? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been developed a lot over time. It's kind of the same idea uh, as it was from from the get go, in a way. So it started uh, way back in in Ohio in kind of a medium sized uh, bank with uh, that. Actually, it was yeah. It was, it actually, I worked at a newspaper first in in Ohio, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I was kind of a programmer, sort of a board programmer, mm-hmm. and um, I uh, I hated command line stuff from from college. I had a Mac background, and they made us use the the command line, kind of the mm-hmm. keyboard and Emacs and and Vim, and just hated it. I was like, mm-hmm. "Where's you know, where's the mouse?" I, I'm used to being kind of guided through things, but at some point, I um, kind of fell in love with with the command line and kind of just the utter simplicity and the power that that you get when you do remember commands. Yeah, uh, you yeah, can just exactly. fly through stuff. And, um, and you have utter control over the command line environment. You can make your own little aliases, keyboard shortcuts, and and uh, you know, and in your editors, you can you can make your own little scripts and and yep. uh, little functions. So I, I fell in love with Emacs, and the first thing that kind of was the the germ of Zicky initially was I thought Emacs is really cool. One obvious you know lack that it has. Uh, that as someone with a Mac background was blaring to me was doesn't have a good file uh, tree navigator. Oh, okay. Um, so I was like, hey, maybe I can code this in, in Elisp. And I oh. coded up a little, you know, basically I just use, you know, indenting to to draw little indented trees, just like everyone does it. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so kind of my first hello world for that is like you type slash like any any directory path or like slash at C or whatever, and then you uh, type a keyboard shortcut and it lists out the uh, directories underneath it. Um, you know, indented two spaces underneath, and then you could uh, go down and it, you know expand one of those directories, and, and then its contents are indented. You know, four spaces underneath, so it's just yeah. it's just a textual indented tree. And uh, I could use that to you know basically navigate the whole file system and navigate to files and and. Uh, Starting out in a text editor like led to a lot of a lot of cool kind of side effects that turned out to be really kind of fundamental things. Like if you if you do what I just described in a text editor, you know you list directories, uh, you can just delete the directories you don't care about. Because like let's say you you know let's say you you you're looking at the directory of like your your models or your JavaScript files for your project, and you've got twenty of them, and at the given moment. The ones you care about are the ones that are, you know, at the top that start with like A and the other one starts with Z. You don't want to um, have to keep scrolling back and forth. Uh, so you just you just delete everyone except for the, the two files that you care about. And that becomes this really concise, uh, you know, navigation element. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you can you can go even further and, and uh, indent underneath the file itself, like a line from inside the file you know, or two or three of those, because, you know, usually within, usually at any given time, a developer is going to be working on like two or three or four, you know, files. And you're going to be jumping around, you know, to like two or three or four, you know, a handful of places within those files. And you're going to be jumping back and forth. Yep. So you can, you know, make these little navigation elements that include like, let you jump to the files and even jump to different spots within the files. Um, that was kind of one of the earlier, early on things. And once I had this, like, you know, basically just free form text that you can just modify and you can, you know, copy and paste, delete the parts you don't care about. You can add little notes. 
once I kind of got going with that, I realized there, you know, that applied to so many things, just like using commands in, in general. And yeah. so the next step was, uh, you know, hey, I'll make a little textual syntax, like a wiki like syntax for um, running shell commands. And that's obvious. It's already out there, basically, you know, like in your markdown file, if you want to yeah. show an example shell command, just type a dollar sign and then, you know, space. And then your shell command. So I made that work um, from within Emacs. Yeah. You can type dollar sign space, uh, whatever, PWD, and then you uh, double click on it or, or type a keyboard shortcut, and then it runs the shell command and inserts the output indented underneath the shell command, two spaces. Yep. And uh, then I added filtering. So every time you run a shell command, you can type a few letters to filter the command output down. Uh, so it's kind of like piping to grep, but way way better yep um and uh i kind of kind of went from there and it just went crazy and i've i've never been able to stop working on it for you know <laughs> 15 really plus right years thing. or whatever and, yeah and eventually i people like just got it's relatively recently actually people like it was it was still before the last kickstarter you still had to install emacs and oh, people okay. were like oh my people were like oh i love the videos like you can do all this amazing stuff in the command line, you can type prompts wherever you want with the dollar sign space. You can auto filter. You can save your your sessions. Uh, you can you can make your sessions look really nice and uh, and clean and concise. Uh, you can delete the output and even the commands that you don't care about. So your sessions only have the important commands, not the mistakes and the mm-hmm. you know hundred lines of of uh, you know ls output or, or whatever. You can just you just delete all that stuff. So your commands look re- your sessions look really nice only have the commands that um, that you need. And then you can, uh, with the new versions of Ziki, your sessions actually just get saved automatically. And then you can search your own sessions and, you know, open them up and just rerun the commands instead of, you know, Googling over and over or do, doing control R a hundred times <laughs> yeah. um, and driving yourself crazy. Uh, oh, yes. So like people have always, I've, I've done, you know, like I said, a, a few major conferences and I've done tons of like local user groups and, and videos and people loved that. Uh, but then they would start to use it and it was like, step one, install Emacs or Aquamax. Mm-hmm. And they were like, Oh, I hate it. You know, <laughs> this I is went scary. from loving it. Yeah. Yeah. I went, to, I went from loving it to hating it, uh, in like two seconds. <laughs> so after, after the last Kickstarter passed in 2014, I'm like, all right, it, it, it People were just started hammering me on that. They were like, I, I had some other stuff in the Kickstarter about like running running commands from text editors, and after the Kickstarter, people were like, Hey, we don't we don't care about that. We want this to work from the the command prompts. Uh, and I was like, All right, I've got to listen to this. And I sort of fell in love with that myself, and that's how I use it all the time now. Just your in bash or Z shell, and you type a you know Git or whatever, and then you type a, a keyboard shortcut, and then you're you know navigating the interface for git um so that was that was a one of the biggest steps in the evolution was after the kickstarter i uh made it a really easy installer where it'll, it'll install right from bash or z shell um and you know i made it just really work kind of seamlessly with the command line so you can you know you can go to a session that you had you know from last week and then you can uh then you're in kind of ziki shell but it it just looks like a shell. It's XSH nice. is, is kind of the, the main thing you use in Ziki. It's called Ziki shell. Um, and then you can, you know, see your past commands and then you can type another keyboard shortcut and just run it right back in Bash or Z shell. So you're just seamlessly popping out kind of instantly between your normal environment that you're used to and, uh, and Ziki shell. Yeah. So, so that's, is that the way you work with it? Like you jump yeah. back and forth all the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's worked out kind of being something where you know users kind of taught me something I wouldn't have necessarily thought of. That I kind of kind of really am glad that I'm I'm glad that I don't listen to users mm-hmm. about a lot of things. But there are a lot of, a lot of really important things where you're like, oh my god, like users are so so key to you know to uh, contributing pretty awesome ideas. Yeah. So so. so. So I guess the workflow then is that you keep you do stuff in the terminal as usual. And then when you want to need to, you execute something into into Ziki shell and do some stuff there, and then then jump back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Like you just do whatever you normally do in Bash or Z shell, and then if you think like, hey, this I want to do like a Git log, and I want to just filter everything down. Yeah, uh, to try just that. by <laughs> seems great. Uh, 
It is. It's it's so much so much nicer than you know doing a Git log and then it fills up your you know like mm-hmm. fills yeah. up your terminal and then and then you're like oh actually I meant Git log pipe uh, <laughs> exactly. space grep space something else and then it narrows it down to like ten of them and then you're like well actually I meant this one and then you have to type another command uh, you know like Git diff and you have to type or copy and paste the hash from your <laughs> screen. Uh, that's that's one of the reasons that everyone seems to love kind of the the demo that's that's now in the beginning of the Kickstarter video of just like, hey, explore and do stuff in in Git. You don't have mm-hmm. to like kind of keep retyping commands. Like one of the things that makes the command line is uh, one of the things that makes the command line so so great and and compelling is when you do remember commands, you can just fly. Yeah. Um, but uh, when you can't remember commands, or maybe you're using like a, a a part of Git that you don't normally use, like doing something with branches, mm-hmm. uh, then all of a sudden, like things flip around, and the kind of like you know uh, intentionally rigid uh, design of the command line kind of um, you know kind of bites you and yeah. becomes a disadvantage. But we can have both, you know, like uh, that um, do whatever you normally do in your command line. Uh, that you're good at, that you know and love. And then if you want to say, learn a new command like Docker, then, you know, then try, try just uh, using an interface instead of, you know, of, of, of uh, kind of going through the standard slow learning curve for learning new commands. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just, <laughs> you can just keep the commands, I guess, in a, in a session in CK shell as well. <laughs> I mean, I re- I realized that I could yeah. have like, pwd and cd dot dot and some more at the top of of a session and then just execute them and move between folders and strange stuff so i guess i can keep some stuff there as well if i wanted to if i wanted to work like yeah that. yeah so, that's that's really a, it, sorry that's, that's really like something i probably didn't didn't emphasize enough that you can rerun commands that's a really important point to make that kind of makes a lot of stuff possible so when you when you have this uh dollar sign space to make a new prompt or you just ran a command from uh from your normal shell um if you want to run it again like you like you're saying you know with with cd or whatever you just collapse the old command and then run it again yep and it's a it's a really it really feels good as well it has a nice feeling to it <laughs> like just expanding out the folder and see see what's where we are right now it's it's pretty pretty it's, fancy it's it's different, but it's this kind of fundamental thing that, that mm-hmm. people can kind of kind of get and, and see the value of right away. But yeah, so in the past, they would they would get that. They'd see my videos, and I would get tweets like, "My mind is blown," like my brain just melted. <laughs> and then people would would try to install it, and then it'd be like, you know, step one, install Emacs, and mm-hmm. they would cry and uh, <laughs> get send me a mean tweet or or something or, or not or whatever a mean GitHub comment. Um, so after the Kickstarter campaign, I just worked really, really hard and rewrote everything and made it so it's a one line it has a one line installer, and um, and so like like you mentioned early on uh, in the conversation, you can make your own commands. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is now a lot simpler, uh, and um, to make your own command, you can literally just you make your own interface. You can just make a text file, put a couple wiki headings in it. And the wiki headings become your um, your kind of menu items mm. uh, or your search results when you when you share in other people's search. And then you can have just like one or two lines of JavaScript code or, or Ruby code or whatever in those headings. And then um, that's your interface. So you could make a, you know, you can make a Docker uh, interface just by making a, a docker.zicky file uh, and putting it in your home directory in the Zicky directory. And then you can have a heading, which is like uh, list images and, uh, or let's say or list containers. And then underneath that, you can have a shell command or it can have code either way. And then your shell command can be like Docker uh, PS, which is, you know, kind of yep. hard to, to remember uh, at first because you'd think it'd be Docker list or Docker yeah. <laughs> uh, containers or something. And like, that's it. Then you could, you know, now you can type Docker, your command prompt, type a keyboard shortcut, and then... Uh, list images or list containers let's say you've got both those will appear uh as items and then you just expand those and it runs the command and then you've got a kind of an interface there yeah and can you you can do some of this stuff like almost in line as well right yeah you can also just uh even simpler you can just 
type uh, code right next to commands. So if you've got like a, you know, a shell command uh, that you just ran that's like PWD, you can like uh, type a exclamation mark, which is kind of the wiki syntax for for code. Yep. It's JavaScript by default. So right underneath nice. your shell command you just ran, right right there in the command line, you can type exclamation and then like one plus two or, or you know, some function you defined and then it runs it as JavaScript. Yeah. Yeah, oh, which is pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, it's really that, that was a, like like a sort of fun realization as well because I I started looking through uh, the little tutorial section in inside Sticky Shell, mm -hmm. and I kept expanding stuff and sort of I don't know fell over the edge or something and I, I realized oh here's an expansion point it's not finished but I could add something here I could finish it <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah, there, there are several places uh, where if you type something that doesn't kind of exist or you expand something, it'll pop up and say like, hey, this this doesn't exist yet. Do you want to, you know, implement this little uh, item or, or, or whatever it is? And then it'll kind of walk you through, like, it'll kind of create the file for you and show you where to put your code and, and kind of guide you through. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it. yeah, it's, it's, it's such, a, such a good way to both remind you that the system isn't locked up it's there to like so it can sort of expand either way you want to go and also make it feel approachable to do so thanks yeah that's that was kind of kind of the plan uh hopefully now that the, it's got you know, you know I, I got the decent installer the pretty solid installer out there in the command and support yeah uh year or so ago i but i haven't really publicized it that much no i didn't so realize I'm, it was there I, I know i tried an early version and that worked but I had something on my system, so it, it worked like halfway, mm -hmm. and this one just mm -hmm. worked. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm really now that I'm actually finally publicizing this new, you know, hey, Zicky working right from the uh, command line, yeah. right from your normal shell. I'm really excited about uh, what the what the response is going to be. I kind of intentionally didn't want to um, publicize it too much until I got the the next Kickstarter out there because I wanted, you know wanted this to be the time that people get excited about it. I've, yeah. I've had things in the past where people got all excited and like got thousands of, of tweets about a, a YouTube video or something. And then, you know, and people forget about it. Uh, That's a too, uh, little too early or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Timing is, is super key with stuff like this. Yeah. As a, as an open source programmer, you're, you're uh, forced into the role of, of thinking about kind of, uh, you know, Everything. marketing type things, which I, really rebel against it first but now i kind of accept yeah you seem you seem to have done a lot of like preparation both in videos and texts for for this kickstarter yeah way, way more like i said than i you know i care to admit i've, I've been <laughs> like basically a a video editor for the last few months yeah and i also got to see your your medium post which i guess would also be out by now yeah and that yeah was... that's Sorry, go on. Just a little, little, little background about, uh, about uh, I don't know, kind of my my battle mm -hmm. with the to turbocharge the command line. Yeah, it's, it's a super, super good read. I, I really enjoy reading stuff like this. It feels like, oh, I get a peek behind the scenes. It's, it's so interesting. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I uh, I kind of I kind of switched up my writing style there uh, when, when I was getting feedback from um, from the video. Uh, a uh, guy who I really respect told me like, Hey, you, you know, you need to learn how to, how to kind of make your, your points and be convincing. And he, he recommended a book called, uh, made to stick. Oh, okay. Which is, it's really cool. It's, it's kind of about kind of like marketing messages, but it's, it's, it tries to stay away from kind of BS. Ah. It kind of says like, Hey, don't, don't do uh spammy stuff. Like, make a message that's, you know, punchy and, and easy to follow, but also make it be kind of a core message that isn't misleading people. And that's, you know, that's where you get the, the really strong messages. So yeah, that, the book kind of recommends um, telling stories and yeah. kind of, uh, you know, I, I, I wrote a couple of versions of the, the this uh, kind of storytelling, you know, that's going to be posted on Medium where I kind of said things like, uh, you know, I was, I was, um, in Ohio, uh, working at boring banks and insurance companies. Um, and you know, th there were a lot of rules you had to follow and it was kind of boring. So, you know, I, I decided I should work on Ziki and I kind of realized like, 
that that's okay, but that's just me telling my opinion. Uh, I can do I can make that way more interesting by by telling an anecdote and it gets the point across. So I, I changed it. I changed all those little kind of like me saying you know blah blah blah. Here's my opinion. Here's how I think things should should be. I changed them to just little stories. Uh, so that that I changed to. This is actually a true story. I was uh, I was sitting with my boss in in a bank. Mm-hmm. Getting ready to uh, launch something that I like programmed, and if it if it broke, you know, literally, uh, I could be fired, and ten thousand people would would not get to their bank accounts for an hour. Oh, um, that's the kind of thing that can happen at, at a bank. So this mm-hmm. executive walked up behind us and stood there, this kind of tall, imposing executive, and uh, he said, "This better work," and that was all he said. <laughs> oh, and no pressure. We, yeah. <laughs> And we kind of pressed the button and it did work. Oh. And he kind of like, you know, you could tell he was a little disappointed. He said nothing. He kind of moped back to his office. Uh, and, Ruined expectations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I told that story and then I said, and then I, then I um, bought a house and two cats. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that gets across the point of, yeah. um, of like, hey, it was a big, boring insurance company. It was soul crushing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that does a way better job of getting the point across than actually saying that. Yeah, yeah definitely. So, uh, so yeah, this post is just a bunch of kind of stories about yeah. me moving to San Francisco and and uh, I started to find the funniest kind of like anecdotes uh, about kind of my, my Zicky story. Like one of them was I was sitting behind my mom's house and, and in Ohio and telling her like, hey, my friend Keith thinks I should move to, to San Francisco. And, and I was kind of expecting her to, you know, to, to kind of be like a sad mom and kind mm-hmm. of cry and talk me into going. But she kind of immediately said, go. <laughs> <laughs> do it do it like go for it and it's like, God, wow. expected <laughs> mom is that you <laughs> right like are, can you be a little little less you know excited <laughs> <laughs> leave the state do it <laughs> yeah, parents can surprise <laughs> no it, it was actually a really constructive thing because she you know yeah, she did want to did want to have me around really, but she was like, Hey, like you don't fit in here in Ohio. You're too much of a nerd. You're, you know, uh, you're into all this tech stuff and people don't, you know, that's kind of a drawback, like socially in Ohio. Uh, I think it's probably changed since, since 2011 when I moved out here, but uh. you know, in, in the Midwest, you know, it's, technology is, you know, is considered kind of nerdy and, and, uh, if you want to sit down and chat with someone about, you know, your new app idea or something like that out here in San Francisco, that's, you know, that makes you actually like a cool person. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a regular in topic, o- I guess. In Ohio, it was kind of like, why aren't you talking about, you know, sports or mm-hmm. religion or TV or something? Yeah. And then you have to kind of feel embarrassed that you're, that you have these weird, weird ideas and inclinations. But yeah, yeah I moved out here and <laughs> command line. What's, you know, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> Do you mean assembly line? Uh, <laughs> so, <makes> sense. <laughs> yeah. so I moved out here and, and kind of like sort of, relived my childhood and had this amazing time of kind of connecting mm. with people and just being sort of nerdy and kind of feeling comfortable in my own skin for the first time. Oh, it's yeah, that's wonderful. Try to kind of convey that in the, in the medium post. Yeah. It feels like it came across. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, of course I said like, get back my Kickstarter. <laughs> but <laughs> that I, is I, kind of the point. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I, I, uh, Made some good stories in there. I, I didn't. I didn't trick people. Like the the title says, Zicky colon. The title of the, the post mm-hmm. is Zicky colon. You know, a developer's battle to turbocharge the command line. So yeah. I was. You know, I didn't do one of those shysty things where uh, I kind of said like, here top top ten command line tricks, and yeah. at the end be like, back my Kickstarter. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can guarantee, even if you're not interested in command lines at all, you will enjoy the stories. It's, it's good stories. Just yeah, speaking thanks. to the people out there. <laughs> <laughs> So, 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 what is what is Siki written in? Which language or languages? Uh, the important thing there now is JavaScript is the language that people use to write mm-hmm. kind of extensions. It's the the main language. Um, the project itself uh, is mostly written in Ruby still, oh. but JavaScript is the user facing language that everyone sees. Yeah. Um, and then there's some Elisp because it still uses uh, Emacs kind of behind the scenes, sort of like an engine. But I reprogrammed all of the keyboard shortcuts. So like 
you're completely insulated from from Emacs. It doesn't interfere with your normal Emacs config. Yeah. I had a uh, another another little story I mentioned in that that Kickstarter post. Unfortunately, I used up all my good stories in that Kickstarter post. <laughs> so I don't know if I can use this tactic again of like you know being entertaining <laughs> you, with stories. You, you can hear most people won't have had time to read the article yet. I hope they will once <laughs> they hear this though. It's yeah, but what, what do I do with the what do I do with my next? Um, my next, you know, article that I write, I use up all my good stories. <laughs> uh, but now there, there was a guy I was trying to convince to use Zicky, and uh, he immediately he he tried to hit escape to get himself kind of you know out of trouble, which is what everyone does. Yeah. And back then it was all you know Emacs defaults, and escape gets you into more trouble uh, <laughs> instead of getting you out of it. It's like a modifier key. It's like you you held down Alt for the next key you press. Uh, so he got fro- so frustrated after the end a couple of times. He stood up, went back to his laptop, and he was like, "I can't use this." Uh, so yeah, getting getting I I fixed that. Now when you hit Escape in Zicky, it backs you out of what you were doing. Yep, I did it today. It worked perfectly. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Th- nice. There was a second of dread. Wait a minute. I ended up in Emacs. Do I know how to get out of here? <laughs> we are supposed to kind of not even know that it's mm-hmm. Emacs. Uh, <laughs> but uh, during the install process, it, you know it because it tells oh, yeah. you what it's doing. But from then on, yeah, it'll be totally transparent. Uh, I, I wouldn't have noticed if I wasn't looking for it. Uh, I mean, I, I, I was curious, which editor did I end up in right now? So, uh, uh, so it, uh, but I got out. <laughs> so it works well. Con- control Q. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or actually escape in many times will just get you out of the, the Zicky shell as well and take you yeah. back to Bastion Z shell. Yeah. So, depending on when you do it. Mm-hmm. So uh, do, do you have a, like a, a long vision of what Zicky wants to become over time? Or is, is Zicky what it, what, it, what it is meant to be right now? apart from the social aspect? Hmm. Um, I've had a few different ideas that I didn't didn't necessarily get excited about long-term over time. The, I, I always knew I was going to need a repository, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of what Ziki Hub is. Um, I didn't have the, uh, you know, like basically like when you make all these neat commands and you're like, hey, check it out, uh, you know, use, use Postgres just by typing like tables and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're navigating your tables and even updating records. People are like, oh, well, I want to contribute my commands too. Like, do you have a repository? And I was like, no, mm-hmm. but I'll have to make one eventually. I didn't, I didn't know how it was going to work. I figured it'd be like kind of like NPM, maybe kind of like RubyGem, something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a uh, couple of years ago, just all these ideas kind of fell into place. And I was like, duh, this is the obvious way of doing it. Mm-hmm make the uh, command line work like a, a search engine and that you just type kind of searches and let those basically interact with the command right there. And that's my repository, basically. So the way that you search other people's stuff that they've con- contributed to the quote-unquote repository is that you just search from your uh, command prompt and all this knowledge that people have have you know accumulated just by sharing, which is which is I made really easy. It's just right there at your fingertips, um, and it's, it's this kind of new thing where it's like a combination of sort of a search engine and a repository, yeah. because you can just search and it's super freeform. You just type whatever you want. You know, in a lot of cases there won't be a result there, but but eventually, you know, there will be uh, yeah. because people will, will fill in the gaps. Uh, so it's like a search engine in that respect, um, but it's like you know kind of a repository in that in the search results, you can just run stuff. Uh, so it's kind of like this new paradigm where we can all just kind of uh, make and share these little code snippets. And then we can immediately use each other's code snippets just by searching for things that will kind of all seem intuitive to people. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause you know, there's going to be overlap where, you know, most people are going to think if you want to uh, back up your database, you'll type like, you know, MySQL space backup or whatever, you know, you know people are going to just do what seems natural and, and then, and conventions will kind of, kind of happen. They're the, the easiest thing to do, but yeah. So it's going to, I say that, uh, you know, it's going to do for commands, what GitHub did for code. Mm-hmm. It's going to be this huge knowledge base. That's right there at your fingertips from the command line. And, you know, it's going to change the way if things work out well, uh, which, you know, signs are, are pointing to, uh, you know, in the positive direction so far, mm-hmm. um, things work out with Ziki Hub. It's going to change, you know, the way we kind of uh, learn not only commands, but also code um, and the way we develop. Uh, 
you in the Kickstarter video, you can see a couple examples where I just type like JavaScript and then it'll show command examples. Mm-hmm. Or, I'm sorry, it'll show code examples yeah. of JavaScript code of little blocks and you can run those right from the search results. It also works for frameworks like Node.js and React even. So you can type React space like button at your you know command prompt and um, it'll pop up search results right there in the command line and it'll show you code snippets in React and then when you run those, it pops up a browser window and then runs the React examples so you can see how to, you know, make a button or, or make form fields or make a list in React. And then you can modify the code examples right in the command line. And um, it'll, you know, update it in the browser and you can kind of just modify. And so, so the way people learn how to, you know, how to do new things in frameworks and, and languages um is you know there's going to be this kind of awesome new new option where you can just contribute little little snippets of things, um, or you know if, if you're if you feel ambitious, which a subset of people will, mm-hmm. uh, they'll contribute these you know more sophisticated kind of user interfaces. And you know you don't you don't have to jump in and be like I'm going to make a whole kind of user interface for for Docker or whatever. You can just make <laughs> one little search result. And then uh, other people, if it's good, other people will vote that up. And then when other people search, it'll appear, you know, toward the top of the search results. Uh, and then uh, the bad stuff will be voted down. So it'll be this kind of thing where we, so it'll be like this almost hive mind where we can all make a collective user interface for commands and even for, for frameworks and stuff. Yeah, and keep evolving. I, li- I like it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I had other ideas where I, I, I wanted it to also be sort of like a, a UI framework. Um, oh, that's a big one. Paradigm. Yeah, it, but you know, this is this would be a longer, longer term <laughs> thing. But you know, it's, I still do believe in the, the argument um, where you know, like there are all these these watches. There's the the Apple Watch, the Pebble, and you know, tons of other ones. There's you know, VR interfaces, uh, mobile interfaces, and there's a freaking different. Um, you know, API for, for programming all of these things. Mm-hmm. Um, React Native is a, a huge step in the right direction toward, you know, oh, making true. you be able to write once, run on, you know, Mac and, um, uh, sorry, on, on your iPhone and on your Android phones. That's awesome and totally, you know, past, uh, past due, overdue. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kind of Ziki play on that is like, Let's make it work on like phones and uh, and as well as watches and you know your desktop and uh, right from the command line by having this kind of simple format. Uh, one thing that's kind of similar to that that is an idea I'm I'm, I'm still really excited about is um, since it's basically data structures like mm-hmm. hashes and, and arrays uh, having an alternative uh, to those. Um, we're so used to. Um, when we program, uh, kind of making hashes and, and arrays mm-hmm. for kind of all of our data. And JSON is so amazingly, uh, incredibly useful. Yep. Uh, and it kind of changed the, the, the way so many th- things work in technology where you can just like, instead of having to make a bunch of objects and classes or, or XML tags or going further back, like EJB and Corbett interfaces, mm-hmm. like all the authorities were against like using JSON yeah. as like an interface. Everyone that like we should have listened to told us like, don't do that. Like make it, make it strongly typed and make objects and stuff. But just like grassroots kind of, you know, uh, thing that happened was people were like, screw you guys. <laughs> this is easy. I'm doing it. Yeah. Let's get things and now done instead. Exactly. And now it's the norm. So, so there, uh, there's an idea with making kind of, a JSON like a JSON like data structure that's even simpler and even more uh, user uh, kind of friendly and user editable that kind of takes the next step past JSON. Like if it's so useful to you know to make JSON with kind of curly brackets and and uh, colons and quotes, then it's going to be even more useful for a lot of use cases to just like have a really an even simpler uh, format. Where you've got just indented text and you know, uh, uh, CSON CoffeeScript object notation has has proved that point, um, as well as uh, as uh, YAML, like it's uh-huh. kind of text indenting. But there's an even 
simpler step that can be taken, which is kind of what, what Zicky does, where you don't even need to worry about whether it's arrays or hashes. Even in, in, in CSON and, and uh, YAML, you have to th- go through that mind warping puzzle of like, okay, I have this structure where it's a bunch of users and, and you know, I need to have a list of accounts underneath. Should that be a array of arrays of arrays or a hash of arrays of, of hashes? Or, you know, it's like, it's mind warping. Like even yeah, like yeah. if you have a, once you like figure out what that structure is, editing it, sometimes you'll mess it up because you'll forget. Yeah, that we need to change to like, halfway. Yeah, you'll you have to change it halfway for sim- really simple reasons. You're, like mm-hmm. you'll realize, like you put this whole system in place and you'll realize like, oh, one time out of a hundred, I have to have a duplicate key. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and in that one case, it's really important. I have, I need this. Mm-hmm. Um, so you'll have some hack uh, or you'll rewrite the thing to make it arrays instead of hashes. Uh, the idea with the kind of Zicky data structure thing is I want to make these data structures that you can use in all these languages. And um, uh, they're just, they're utterly free form. You can just type indented um you know, data, uh, just indent two spaces and you, your outer level can be your, you know, your user IDs or your names or whatever. And then underneath that, you can, you can indent, indent a, a list of, um, of accounts or, you know, a list of addresses or mm-hmm. maybe just one address. It's not nested for a user that, uh, only has one address. Um, there's a very flexible, uh, syntax for just a data structure. So I want to make, uh, Libraries for all the different languages out there, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, um, maybe even Java. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, like all, all languages, um, so that you can just sort of dump data into them and then pull them out kind of by, by paths, the same way you do when you're using Zicky uh, from the command line. Oh, yes. Uh, it's all kind of path, path-based and indented tree-based. And there are a lot of just really amazing kind of side effects that come that'll come out of that. Um, like if you have a, a data structure in your program and it's been in memory so far, and you think, okay, now I want that to be like stored in in you know AWS or something. Yeah. Uh, you'll since there's this kind of generic format uh, for uh, for data uh, that includes kind of navigating the data as well as kind of the structure of it. Uh, you can just swap out that that uh, Zicky object, which is kind of like you know a hash mixed with a, an array mixed with a text mm-hmm. uh, variable. You can swap out a you know property on that, saying, "Hey, store this in you know AWS instead of uh, uh, in memory." Mm-hmm. Uh, you know that, that sounds crazy, but like think back to what I was saying earlier about how just by typing kind of these strings that are nested underneath each other, you can navigate my sql you just type like yeah. my sql and then underneath that it has like backup and databases and tables then you expand um uh tables and it lists out all your tables employees whatever and then you expand out employee employees and then you can see all your records um you can do all that programmatically you know it's, it's yeah. a lot like sort of xpath or, or like using jquery to to Dig just through. navigate the dom yeah it's fascinating. I mean, yeah, I can't wait to see like all the evolution that this could lead to in different ways. I want yeah, it's, something it's like this on my on my iPad or wherever. I don't know if it has to look the same or completely different, but I, I want it. <laughs> yeah, mobile interfaces um, could you know could fit in really well with this too. Yeah. Um, just for the record, I'm not promising any of this for the Kickstarter. This <laughs> no, 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 no. Out there in the future. Uh, no, I asked about visions and like future ideas. <laughs> so, okay, cool. So, so don't misunderstand anything. Go read the Kickstarter. It says what's in there. <laughs> <laughs> I was also wondering, like, this is the terminal or a wiki or text-based stuff on steroids or taken to the next level. Do you know if there are any other projects out there taking other interfaces in new interesting directions? I was kind of wondering, shouldn't this, stuff like this, shouldn't this happen more often? Shouldn't we be experimenting much more than we are? Sure. Um, yeah, there, there are several pretty awesome developments uh, on the command line uh, front. Like their fish shell is getting a lot of, 
a lot of you know Steam, uh, mm-hmm. Zish and Oh My Zish are really neat. They kind of like oh, yeah. modernize the command line in, in certain ways. Uh, Ziki, you know, will work with with Z Shell and, and Bash yeah. and stuff. So it doesn't mean to compete with him. Uh, oh. They do a lot of things that Ziki doesn't doesn't do or try to do that are that are really compelling and really neat. Um, what's what's the uh, there's a terminal that runs in that lets you extend it with JavaScript. You know what I'm talking about? That's oh, the node based one. Or something? Yeah, is it called that's, Hyper? That's pretty neat. Yeah, Hyper. Yeah, Hyper is pretty, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I saw, pretty, I saw uh, a demo with little sparks flying and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do kind of visual stuff. So that's 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 neat and improves the command line in kind of kind of different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Hyper and Ziki both let you extend it with with JavaScript, but you know, Ziki is is more kind of uh, it's it's. I shouldn't say it's not focused on graphical stuff, but it's it is in a different way. Like you you can definitely do things in Ziki where um uh you can control native stuff so like um it's pretty straightforward and i, I have code that i'm that's out there on on ziki Hub. like ziki Hub also is, i'm going to really develop it after the campaign succeeds right now there's only like a kind of barely usable alpha version out there but i you know, proved it out um yeah. and i've you can see in the kickstarter video uh where from the command line you can make kind of cool visual stuff happen um, in on the Mac and Swift, it's pretty easy to make a uh, uh, floating window that's transparent. That's just a WebKit window, and then sending HTML to it like D three and stuff. Wow. And it looks like it's H, it's just like you know a, a div or a D three triangle or whatever. And it looks like it's kind of just like floating on your desktop and in, in its own native. It looks like it's a native you know thing that you programmed, but it's huh. just HTML. Hmm. Um. And you can do all kinds of pretty awesome things with with just sending HTML to kind of your your desktop using a native interface. <laughs> I show in the the Kickstarter video just typing like desktop and then setting your desktop oh, yes, to yes. A, <laughs> to an image or a video. And then I also show like making you know these kind of D three things fly around where the, like a <laughs> navigation bar pops out from the side and has a couple items on it. So you can you can you know okay. you can do stuff in Ziki as well that, that in, in a different way that. Um, uh, you know, controls your native interface. Uh, mm-hmm. Another thing that's, that's pretty neat. Uh, that's you mentioned wikis. Uh, Ziki mm-hmm. is very inspired by by wikis. Uh, it's called Ziki, which is spelled X I K I. Yep. Because you know, it's a it's a homage, it's a shout out to wikis. Um, I've actually been able to uh, to have some some conversations with uh, the guy who originally created the wiki. Uh, his oh. name's Ward Cunningham. Yeah, really, really interesting and and guy with just tons of of ideas. Uh, and uh, it's a great guy to talk to if you ever get the chance. Um, he has a project called uh, Smallest Federated Wiki, or I think he's just calling it Federated Wiki. Mm-hmm. And he's got he's got some followers there. He's got seven or, or several thousand people making uh, uh, making kind of their own wikis on it. So it's the idea there is. Um, Kind of his idea for the next version of of the wiki idea that doesn't require a central server, you know, like Wikipedia. Um, everyone can make their own kind of little wikis and make this kind of small, uh, these small little kind of wiki pages that sort of fit in together. And uh, when you click on a link, it doesn't make your page that you're on disappear and go to a new page like you know, like the web browser does. The new page pops up next to the page that you're on. So you can easily scroll mm-hmm. over and, and go back to where you were and you don't lose your context. Ooh. And those pages stay there on the, you know, in the UI and they can reference each other. So you can have like one person who makes some data, uh, you know, he, he, he makes a page that has a little, little bit of data in it. And then another, maybe that same person say makes another page that refers to that page and draws, draws a graph of that data. Uh, if you find this content, you find this graph and you're like, Hey, that's neat, but I'd like to see, you know, the previous month instead of, instead of, mm-hmm. uh, August or whatever, you can sort of clone their page, uh, and then re- refer back to their page that, that has data on it, uh, for example, and make your own graph of, of their data. So it's, it's pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty <laughs> out of the left field rethinking of kind of wikis and sharing information where once you see it, you're like, God, why didn't I think of that? You know? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's so simple in a way, but it's such a big, 
mind expander as well. You see this spider web of interlinking things, sort of expanding out into into the universe. <laughs> yeah, you should you should check out that. He has some pretty great videos mm -hmm. uh, if you Google for like federated wiki. By the way, he's he's the guy who told me that he thought it was. Uh, I think he said the best vi best Kickstarter video he's seen. So that's mm. kind of a thrill. It's Cunningham approved. <laughs> <laughs> should ask him to give me a, a seal oh, oh yes we need a really nice design for the seal <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there a, a lot of like documentation information out there to find now that the kickstarter is out where, where should people go except the kickstarter page is there more to see the kickstarter page is the best best starting point um you can just see how things kind of basically work uh it'll show you um you know a lot of stuff that hasn't been completed yet uh by the way um eventually all this searching stuff is going to be uh available for everyone it'll be kind of like github where you can do most things for free but at the beginning it'll only be backers Makes uh, sense. for the first you know several months um I, I shouldn't say that it won't be only backers. eventually i'll open up so so everyone can kind of search i'll do that soon but it'll only be backers that can kind of you know share share their commands so don't just if if you like this kind of kind of idea and you like innovation in the command line don't just assume like the campaign's going to succeed and like you know it's it's got enough even if it does succeed uh you know don't assume it's got enough money to like make all this stuff kind of be guaranteed to happen like definitely yeah. back the campaign it's only you know it's only a few i think i'm gonna make it around 40 bucks or something like that yeah. like definitely back it um Stuff like this doesn't happen. It's such an uphill battle unless people get behind it and, and, mm -hmm. and support it. Uh, and you'll get an account yeah. um, on on Zikiup, so you'll be able to do all this cool stuff like way before everyone else. And you'll be able to invite other people within certain uh, limits, so you'll kind of be able to to start um, the network, be, sort of. Yeah, which sounds like it's you know kind of doing doing my dirty work for me but there are many things that you'll just you'll want to do because they're, they're so cool you can you can be in uh your your command line and type a couple commands and then just type anyone's email address because you want to share those commands and it will email that person like a little snapshot of your session and it'll give them a link to become a user um also and run those commands in the command line so if you work on a team or you know you've got uh commands you want to share it's going to be really really awesome and only backers will be able to do that but uh back to your question if you also want to see the stuff that you can do right now with ziki uh go to uh, ziki.org um and uh you'll find the one line installer you can kind of get started there's a tutorial that uh i finally after like years listened to users and made a made a decent tutorial um that kind of walks you through and, and makes the initial process much uh much much better yeah but before you do that please go back the campaign <laughs> yeah like this, this thing should happen uh if it's if it's not me then someone's gonna do it eventually and it's gonna be some kind of shysty company that you know that it's not gonna be nearly mm -hmm. as as kind of Open. community friendly as yeah. if, if i do it yeah yeah we've been talking a bit recently on the podcast about uh burn, burning out on uh, projects and uh I read a paper, I finished it just the other day, about uh, how open source is sort of considered infrastructure in many ways. And mm, just yeah. the thing you said that something is out there and everyone takes it for granted, but nobody thinks to contribute in any way or to make sure the thing keeps going. So, so again, I mean, if, you, if we want stuff like this, back it, back it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. It's, it's uh, X-I-K-I dot com i'll have a a link to the kickstarter from there because yes. it's hard to find otherwise yes yeah, it's, it's funny um how there was kind of a a trend uh toward open source you know like a decade ago or, or so and um uh people wanted to kind of control things themselves and and now it's kind of gone back a little bit toward like well big companies are are kind of better than they used to be like if yeah if definitely. google and google and apple are going to run um you know, the way kind of mobile phones work and, you know, artificial intelligence and, and, uh, virtual reality, like people, people aren't, they don't have as much of a, you know, uh, 
demand these days to, to kind of take control of things and, you know, kind of the Richard Stallman, like, you know, Hey, we should own everything. Mm-hmm. But I feel like there's, you know, we're due for a swing back in that direction. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah. Like a, sw- a swing back in the direction of people kind of saying like, wait a minute, like, you know, all right, we have these, these phones out there. Thanks Apple and Google for, for making them for us. But now, uh, we kind of know like how things work. Now we can sort of, you know, put our own operating systems on them even. And we, you know, we don't need to kind of, uh, have everything we do approved by the, the man. Yeah, we don't uh, need to lock down like that. <laughs> lock, yeah, being locked down is, <laughs> makes me so angry so, sometimes. So sort of coming back to hypercard as well in a way, isn't it? As well, it's one of those old things that people talk about every now and then. It's, yeah, this this thing, users could actually go in and create stuff on their own and sort of extend it wherever they wanted. And it's, Yeah, it's, uh, did you use HyperCard back in the, the early days? Just a little bit. My, my dad uh, bought it for our Mac LC2. So I, nice. I clicked around a little bit and he did some stuff. I had an LC3. Oh, and, nice. <laughs> and an LC. I had an LC, so... Yeah. Uh, one upping you and and having a crappier computer at the same time, but uh, yeah, HyperCard. It's funny um, if you listen to any, like the, some of the talks that Ward Cunningham does about where he came up with the wiki idea. It actually started out on HyperCard. Yeah, so so many people did so many things in in HyperCard, and it was this this neat open thing. Uh, there's also um, Open Doc. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, just uh, just the name. It was this like, big movement where everyone was going to be able to just control everything about the user interfaces that that they created just by dragging stuff around. Oh, nice. uh, and there's there's this awesome video of Steve Jobs at one of the uh, you can YouTube it. Um, mm-hmm. He's explaining why he's shutting down Open Doc. Like it's this thing all developers loved it because basically it's kind of like. It's, in a way, it's kind of like what the web became, where you can make components and reuse it. So it was very, very much a, a solid idea. Yeah. But it was going to happen on the desktop in Apple, you know, in like the 90s, yeah. I think, and Apple was building it. And Microsoft was making, you know, like, I think, uh, ActiveX version of it. It was this big trend. But uh, in this in this talk, this, this Apple uh, developer gets up and really sarcastically says, like, all right, Steve Jobs, like, explain to us, like, number one, why you're cutting off this really amazing thing and number two like what have you been doing with yourself for the last few months and the crowd kind of goes oh and he he you know he kind of pauses and like acts really really charismatic and wins you over and says like hey sorry the time hadn't hasn't come yet like I had to do it like the thing that we need to focus on is like the laser writer where you can hold a piece of paper up with this you know mm-hmm. perfect looking document and wave it at people and say like hey do you need this and they're like, I get it right away. He's like, tell me, how do I explain um, uh, this thing to most of our users that are paying the money? Like, you, mm-hmm. you can't do it. Um, but at the same time, it you know, it, it, back in those days, I think a lot of people say the thing that killed OpenDoc was like the memory usage. These com- mm-hmm. components would hog, you know, a couple megabytes. And yeah, makes sense. That sounds funny to us now, but that was a <laughs> uh, showstopper back yeah. in those days. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of in many ways what Ziki kind of tries to be, but within a very limited scope of, of the command line. It's just sort of like free form place where you can do anything you want with kind of text and code and commands. You can yeah. control anything you want. You don't, you don't like something that you see, just select it and delete it. You want to make your own thing, you, know, you can just type code right there mm-hmm. to start out and then maybe turn that into a little uh, interface later if you want. Yeah, I need, I need to play more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is there anything else you'd... You'd like to add? Uh man, I think we covered a lot of it. Yeah, um, I think so too. Yeah, I I've got nothing else other than thank you uh, so much for for having me on. Uh, I listened to to some of your past episodes, and this is a really great podcast. Oh, nice! Thank you. You're pretty prolific too. It seems like you get one out there like once a week or so. Or yeah, something, yeah, or we try, we try. <laughs> should you should uh, have like you should have a separate English feed. So yeah, so I've been thinking about it too. Can, uh, it's been I would uh, for sure listen to to them. Yeah, I'm a big podcast fan. Yeah, yeah I, can't, I kind of listen to too many podcasts. I try to limit myself sometimes. I have the same the same issue, but there's so, there's so much good stuff out there. Yeah, you know? there is, there is. <laughs> I find find this really long history podcast and stuff, and I'm I'm just lost. <laughs> it's great. 
Yeah, okay. Thank you so much, Craig, for coming on and telling about Siki and Siki Hub. And, uh, Thank you, Frederick. Yeah, and everything is linked in the show notes and on our website at uh, codesnack.se. The link is in the show notes. That's easy. <laughs> and, uh, awesome. Yeah. Let me put it this way, Mr. Amer. The 9000 series is the most reliable computer ever made. No 9000 computer has ever made a mistake or distorted information. We are all, by any practical definition of the words, foolproof and incapable of error.